Are we there? Okay. Hi guys. My name is Annie Amon from CarStereoTick.com and I'm so excited because I've wanted to do this for a really long time now and you guys really deserve a uh, explanation directly from me on how this whole ohms, impedance, uh, bridging, mono, parallel, series, what does all this stuff mean and how does it affect your stereo system? Um, I did the blog, but I feel like I might have failed you guys because I get so many questions on it. So I thought maybe it'd be easier if I just sat here, explained it, drew it out on some paper for you guys. So to keep this simple, we're just going to be talking about dealing with one or two subs and, you know, kind of go from there. So first of all, what is an ohm? That little, you know, omega symbol that you guys see hopefully you can see that yeah um that's a measurement of resistance so you know the lower the ohms the lower the number the less resistance the more power is going to come out of your amplifier and you know that's not necessarily a great thing like uh, i get customers all the time they want to run their amplifiers at one ohms first of all I, in my 11 years doing this i have only come across one amplifier that will run stable at one ohms for more than eight months or so. And uh, that's a Kenwood amplifier. Um, the current series is from their Exelon line. It's the X1200M. And it's actually um, does over 1200 watts RMS. But the thing about running anything at one ohms is it's incredibly unstable. And as you drop that impedance down, you're unletting more power, but with less control. So the easiest way to think about it is, um, my husband explained this to me, is a garden hose. You know, you have a hose and uh, you have the nozzle really tight and so your water is a really tight stream. It's really controlled. Um, so there may be, you know, less power or less water coming out, less energy coming out, but it's with precision control. You can point at your buddy and psh, get them right in the eye. So when you open up the nozzle a little bit, uh, you don't necessarily have that distance and that control anymore. You're letting out more energy, more water, but it's with a lot less control. So it's going over a lot larger surface and, you know, you try to aim your buddy, but, you know, you might not have the distance or control to get him where you wanted to hit him. Um, so that's like two ohms. You're on something at one ohms, it's like taking the nozzle off completely. You're just letting that energy, that water just go everywhere. And it's not doing you any good. It's not doing, you know your stereo system any good. So forget one ohm. Forget any amplifier company that says it's stable running at one ohms. I just, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Um, I've never seen one do it for very long. Even reputable brands like Boston Acoustics had an amp that they said was uh, one ohm stable and after about eight months, it wasn't working anymore. So um, now let's say you have two subs because most of my customers come in and they have these problems and they have two subs. So I'm gonna draw out our little subwoofers and they are uneven and they're gonna be single voice coil. All right, and they're gonna be single voice coil, four ohms each. All right, so here's my little rudimentary drawing. Oh, you know what I didn't think about? You guys can't see backwards, huh? Why is that looking like that to me? It's the first time doing this, so I don't know what the home's doing. That's probably just the camera doing that to me. So anyways, you have two subs here, and they're single voice coil, and they're both uh, four ohms each. And we want to hook both of them up to one amplifier. And this amp is going to be a mono amp, single channel. So we have our mono amp. Now, don't get too confused because sometimes mono amplifiers will have two positive and negatives on them, assuming you're going to be doing two subwoofers, but it's still a single channel mono class D amplifier. A um, couple of names of companies that do this Kenwood does this, um, Alpine does this. So make sure it's definitely mono and you're not getting confused and it's not a two channel because two channel is a totally different class and we're going to get to that. So we have our mono amp, and to make things easy, we're going to say it just has a single you know, connection on it. So we're going to parallel. When you parallel, you're tying in both positives and both negatives. And the things that people don't realize about when you parallel any speaker is you're dropping the impedance in half. So if you have two subs that are four ohms each and you go positive to positive, negative to negative, guess what? 
your box is now acting like a 2 ohm subwoofer, um, which is all great if you have a mono amp, but if you have a two channel, not so great. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to tie these positive and negatives together, just like that. So if you have one terminal, you're going to go, you know, positive to positive on each sub, negative to negative to your one terminal on your box, which is then going to go right to here. So this is like the most straightforward, easy way to do, you know, two subs and a mono amp. Now, let's say we had those two subs, those two single voice glow forum subs, and we had a two channel amp, and we wanted to bridge it. That's not going to work. At least not the way you think it's going to work. Um, so, when most people have a two channel amp, and they want to run subs off of it, or you know, one speaker off of it, we bridge, which is using the outside uh, positive and negative. And the thing about bridging is that is also similar to parallel, that is cutting the impedance in half. So now, let's say we want to bridge these two subs that we have. Remember, this whole box is now parallel, so this whole box is now acting like a 2 ohm subwoofer. All right, so if this whole thing is acting as two ohms and we bridge, which is going to the outside positive negatives, this two channel amp is only going to see one ohm. And that means it's going to unleash a lot of power for a minute if you're lucky, and then it's going to heat up and shut down. Heat up, shut down. So, you know, it'll cut in and out for a little bit before it finally just kicks out completely. Um, so, that's one thing you never want to do is bridge a two channel amp. Um, when your impedance is already below four. So, you know, once you know what that final impedance is, once you guys understand series and parallel, that will make a little bit more sense too. So what is series? All right, so let, let's say that somebody did have that setup. Let's say that somebody got two subs from their friend and they were four ohms each and they wanted to use both of them. So the ideal configuration would to wire that in parallel, positive to positive, negative to negative, and so now that whole box is acting like a two ohm load. Um, and then their buddy happens to have a two channel amp that he's gonna give to him for like 50 bucks. So, you know, you're thinking, all right, yeah, I'm gonna get subs in my car, you know, I got my two 12s and my buddy's giving me his amp and now I just gotta go get the wires and hook it up. Um, but then you not knowing a whole lot about this, think, all right, well, you know, it says on the amp, run mono, bridge, all right, so, and then it doesn't work but you don't really have the cash to go out and buy a mono amp. So how do you make that work? Here's how you make it work. You're going to series your subwoofers. Series is a little bit tricky. Nobody usually knows what series is. Now the thing about it is, um, I mean, you could, you technically could series or you could actually, if you had two terminals on the box, you could run, you know, one terminal to the left side, one terminal to the right side, and actually run it as a stereo amp. You could do that. Um, but each sub, when you have stereo, you know, left and right's doing different things. So you're almost better off seriesing it and still bridging the amplifier so that the signal is mixed and both subs play the same thing. All right, so when you have two four ohm subs and you have a two channel amp that you're gonna wanna bridge, you're gonna have to series. And series is, it's, it's kind of um, tricky. But not really once you get it. You're just going to crisscross one positive and negative. So here's our two subs. They are four ohms each and we're going to use our um, positive and negative. We're going to tie them together, one from each subwoofer, so we're linking these two subs so they're one circuit. Now whenever you use series, you're adding. So parallel cuts in half, series you're adding so now this four and four this is like an eight ohm box this whole thing is acting as eight ohms so when we take our open positive and we take our open negative and we go to our amplifier our two channel amp and we bridge it this is all cool because this is acting as an eight ohm box this amp is bridged so it's seeing half of that so it's seeing four ohms so it's happy it's gonna play one play as loud as if you had the mono amp and you ran it in parallel, but it's going to play. So, you know, if your buddy gave you an amp and your other buddy gave you some subs and you want to get it working, but it's not really the right setup, there's usually a way to do it. Um, 
and that's usually series. So um, now let's say you've got dual voice coil. Ah, this is where it gets tricky. This is where it gets tricky for a lot of people. Manufacturers do dual voice coil just to give you some more versatility with your wiring. Um, that's basically it. That's why they do this. So, and not every not every subwoofer company does this, but um, a lot of them do. Alpine especially does this. So we're gonna say you've got this happens a lot. You have two dual four ohm voice coils. Now, if you're gonna have two subs, and they're gonna be dual voice coil, you're gonna want to do a mono amp. This is not the setup you're gonna want. I see this uh, happen a lot of times. Customers come in. They get themselves two subs. They are dual four ohms each. So that means that there's two positive and negatives on each subwoofer, and they each have a rating. So most people think, all right, I'm going to just hook these, tie these positives together, tie these negatives together, and that would be parallel. So we're going to do that because that's what everybody does. Everybody parallels. So now this whole sub and this whole sub, remember, parallel cuts in half. So now each one of these is acting as two ohms each, which means the only safe thing to do is then series them. So it'll act like four, which um, usually sucks because a lot of people end up getting subs that want a lot of power, like um, Pioneers or Type R's from Alpines, and they usually want about 600 watts or so. But finding a mono amp that's going to put out you know, the, the power you need for two of those, you're going to be in the usually like $800 range and you're going to want to get what's called a regulated power supply amplifier. Um, JL makes these in their HD line and then their Slash series and then Alpine makes them in their PDX series. And, and basically what it is is they don't care whether you give it an impedance of one and a half ohms to four ohms. It's going to put out X amount of power no matter what. So, um, I mean, that's cool if you kind of have a setup where it didn't really work out the way you wanted it to. Um, the other option, which I tell a lot of customers you can do this, you can do one amp for each sub. The only thing is it's got to be, got to be the same amplifier. And you've got to tune it with precision. Um, so I, if you're going to do something like that, I do recommend having it professionally installed. And um, Or if you're really into this stuff, go out and get yourself a scope. Um, and you can actually measure... Um, at the amplifier and make sure they are without a doubt at the same uh, gain and you know this way each sub is doing the same exact thing at the same exact time if you have that wrong if you have one sub that's pushing a little bit harder than the other one this is what's gonna happen Oop, what happened to my monitor there we are <laughs> all right screensaver came on um, so what's gonna happen is you're gonna have you know, the subs are going to kind of be hitting at a different time. And this is going to screw up your face. It's going to, it's going to suck shit. So, um, if you guys have questions, please email me. But I wanted to try to give you something that maybe made a little bit more sense. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, remember to check me out at carstereochick.com. Thanks for watching, guys.